Hi, Scott. Thank you for joining us to discuss sustainability at Bowen Branch. I'm happy to be here. Great to see you. Let's start for, for those of us who, who might not be familiar with your story. Uh, you had a background in consumer goods and video games, and your wife was a teacher. What was your inspiration to start an ethically made, sustainably sourced luxury you know, home goods company? Are, are you trying to say that doesn't sound like the typical path? <laughs> the truth is, like, like many people who start a business, we started as consumers ourselves. And um, we were participating in a market or trying to participate in a market. There were too many choices in the market at all different price points. And it was really difficult, you know, as consumers to figure out what you're getting in terms of the, the value for the dollar. It wasn't until we started um, coming up with this crazy idea that we could make it easier and we could do it better that we came to really understand the supply chain and recognize that, that this is an industry that hadn't changed a whole lot in generations. Um, and that wasn't a good thing. And as you were building the company, how did you know that you were on the right path in terms of having sustainability be at the center of, of the organization? You focus on sustainability, I believe, especially as an entrepreneur, because you believe it's the right thing to do. And in our case, we couldn't, we couldn't imagine it in any other way. That meant that all of the traditional channels, or most of them, within home textiles were not available to us. We had to choose our own path. And even today as a $200 million business, it would be easier to just abandon sustainability and, and do what everybody else does. But in our case, we take pride in, in doing things the right way, whether it's easier or not. And do you know if other companies in the industry are, are taking a page from your playbook? I hope they are, but I don't think they are. So what we're seeing right now is a lot of the big box retailers are noticing us because we've taken market share from them. But what are they doing? They're looking at the, the very smallest edge of what we're doing and say, oh, no, we're going to do a line of organic cotton sheets, thinking that checks some major sustainability bucket. All they're doing is sort of watering down the impact and watering down the understanding with consumers on on the impact that their dollar can make. So I challenge all of them to, to think about how do you become holistically sustainable, not just sourcing a sustainable material and putting it into the same broken system that enabled us to build a heck of a business on their back. Maybe could you walk us through what that holistic system looks like just for, for folks who may not be as familiar with the steps you've taken? So when you start thinking about organic, right, the very first place you're starting is the seed. You're using a GOTS approved cotton seed. At the very time the seed goes in the ground, conventional organic cotton become very different things. The goal with conventional cotton is to maximize yield regardless of the conditions. The goal with organic cotton is to maximize yield based on the natural conditions. Unfortunately, most of the cotton uh, that, that is used uh, in the world comes from highly impoverished parts of the developing world. And so when you have highly impoverished parts of the developing world, uh, demand is something that, that strikes fear into, into folks all the time, right? They, they're worried, what if I don't have demand? If I don't have demand, I have no other source of income and I, I won't eat. But what we've done over the last years has been really able to stabilize that demand for, for growers that are moving to, towards organic. And then the way we pay them is not based on a commodity price. We pay them based on a living wage because we believe sustainability isn't only environmental, it's, it's, it's human oriented. We ensure that everybody that comes into contact with our product can live above the poverty line. One of the arguments that some companies make about not adopting sustainable practices at a faster pace or frankly at all is the time and investment it takes to implement the change doesn't necessarily align with their focus on growth and profit. How do you reconcile that at Bowling Branch? If you want to accept that as a company, um, you're basically on a slow march to death. What's happening is, and it's not just us, right? It's a number of companies across a number of different categories are changing the game and the customer has access to more information today than they ever have before. And tomorrow they'll have access to even more. The educated customer embedding chooses Bowl and Branch as a default choice. Um, and the big box stores are hurting. And, and they may say, well, we can't afford margin compression. We can't afford this. We can't afford that. But when they're a public company, you can see what they can afford to, to pay out and compensation and bonuses and all of those things. So um, at the end of the day, it's not an I can't. It's an I've chosen not to. So mm -hmm. for those conventional, uh, conventionally oriented companies, what advice mm -hmm. do you have them uh, have for them in terms of how they can make the transition? 
doing things the right way is good business. And I think you have to really believe it. You have to become educated. You have to understand and think about what, what your values are. What's your mission? Um, and, and what companies will start to, to understand as they make this shift is that it may be expensive. Uh, it may be time consuming and all of those things, but it's going to breed more loyalty among your customers. It's going to be breed more loyalty among your employees. It's going to give you as a, as a founder and operator, a stronger reason to get out of the shower in the morning. One of the most important things for, for folks to remember when it comes to sustainability is that focusing on sustainability does not mean the expectation of perfection day one. And I think that sometimes that's the most intimidating aspect of, of going down a path towards sustainability is you feel that you need this binary switch of, I've done everything wrong, now I'm doing everything right. Start with one thing, then another, then another, and continue to think critically about your own business for ways that you can improve it. How can you reduce some plastic? How can you reduce your carbon emissions? What are the things that you can do? And if enough different companies and enough different brands are doing that, um, the impact we're all gonna see is gonna be amazing. 